Hello and welcome again to the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. This is episode 68, if you can believe that. And thank you for joining. We have a question from Bo, and there's a couple things about this question that uh, if you know me, you know that uh, my friends will be doing this right now. Oh no. Let's, let's go through the question then. When doing the kettlebell swing, what degree of hip flexion should I stop at? Well, I tell you, Bo, you know, God made a lot of people and we all look different. I work with professional basketball players who literally, when they're standing there, can put their hands on top of my head like this. And I work with athletes who come up to my belt. We're all different. Our leg lengths are different. Our shanks, lengths, the lower leg, lower, but everything's different. Should I hinge as far as I can or until my torso is parallel to the floor every rep, even in light weights? No. You should hinge until you feel your hamstrings pull. If you continue going and you feel them relax, you did something I call folding. Uh, you fold laundry. I want you to be in that bow and arrow relationship. Uh, the chin is the tip of the bow, the, the butt is the other tip of the bow, and the hamstring is the strings. And that's what I want. And then if you go too far over, you do something I call, okay, this is your, you fold. And that's as bad for your back as anything I can think of. Listen, I just did this whole thing called the Kettlebell Home User's Guide. There's a 15 minute version on it uh, for everybody on YouTube. And it's got the basics there. And the longer version is on, of course, uh, danjohnuniversity.com. It's for members only. It's 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. And it goes through everything. Look at that. Look at the magic drill. Look at the push your butt to the wall drill. Look at the T drill. Learn those positions and then master that. Uh, watch my videos. Get back to me. Thank you. We have a question from Dave. Numerous times I've heard you mention that older lifters need to focus on hypertrophy or almost bodybuilding type training. Yeah, older, once you're past for sure 55, but it, in, in some cases it'd be 35 plus, I think you, your workout should be more bodybuilding like with mobility work, the free range of movement around every joint. Um, as we age, certain muscles tighten, certain joints tighten, and I think hypertrophy work done with smart mobility work can undo the, 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 the gravity of aging. So that is true. Uh, I would also, you might have missed, but as appropriate, I think you should do uh, uh, some fast switch fiber work. As appropriate, you should do some balance work. If you go to my YouTube tube channel, uh, I've got those drills on standing on one foot that I think are just marvelous for older people. Uh, that would be... The vertical windmill, the speed skater drill, and things like that. So, but let's get back to your question. I was thinking of increasing my weight range, uh, pardon me, my rep range to something like three times 12, currently doing three times five or three times eight. Those are all fine. My question is do I just up the rep range on the push, pull, squat, hinge, loaded carry, or is your suggestion to add some isolation type exercise to my routine? When I think of training for hypertrophy, I always think of exercises like curls, flies, lateral raises. I'm sure, you know, that, and, and Dave, I appreciate that because uh, the weightlifting world has become so indoctrinated with this bodybuilding thing, you know, the go to failure on the leg extension and leg curl machine and do those. No, I, I actually think you can do overhead presses, uh, TRX T's or rows or one arm rows. Um, Rack deadlifts, goblet squats, overhead squats. Uh, by the way, loaded carries are not going to fit in those numbers. Don't don't try to fit them in square peg wrong, uh, round hole. Uh, yeah, um, I I really believe in sticking with the standard basic exercises. At DanJohnUniversity.com, uh, the basic programs do this naturally for you. Yes, and by the way, we do single arm, single leg stuff. But the meat and potatoes, uh, to use the most cliche of cliches, is going to be the basic push, pull, hinge, squat. But yeah, my my training, uh, by the way, most of the time is in that range, uh, three sets of eight, with exercises like the overhead squat, exercises like the front squat, um, because I think that's what's best to me at my age of 63. Uh, 
I like your question. And the reason I like it is that you are you are bouncing into this thing that a lot of us have to deal with. This this image we've got from pumping iron and things like that of someone just wailing away for an hour and a half on concentration curls. And by by the way, and that's fine if you're training for Mr. Olympia or Mr. Universe. But if you're a regular person like myself who's got things to do, uh, you, you don't have time for all the isolation exercises. Do isolation exercises have value? Oh, sure, sure. Every Tuesday, I, I, I work my guns. Every, every Tuesday, buns and guns day. My favorite day of the week, you know? And it is isolation work on my arms. Because really, it's fun to do for me because I never did them. And uh, I like the way I feel after, you know? seam bursting my shirt and all that. So yeah, Dave, good question. Uh, consult danjohnuniversity.com for more details, but uh, I think you and I are saying the same thing now. We have a question from Ted. I'm a former college athlete, 6'6", 220, uh, so uh, almost two meters tall, 100 kilos, who used to have reasonable maxes on barbell stuff 400 pound back squat, 415 deadlift, 285 bench, 315 power clean. You know, it's interesting, just right there, Ted, that power clean uh, is big compared to those other lifts. And I thought that, and then I thought, well, I'm only 6'6", six, six, so those lever arms are a little bit probably harder than power lifts. I don't think I could do anything resembling now that now that I haven't been training on the barbell. A recent inclination to add mass has me desiring to put up big numbers in the weight room again. Boy, I wish I had your age here, but let's keep going. Should I jump right into mass made simple or should I run something like easy strength first? I would like to add 10 to 20 pounds of mass by March or April, so time is not unlimited, but 24 weeks looks like to be plenty of time in my estimation. Uh, if you buy and read the book, Ted, Mass Made Simple, you'll notice that I usually tell people to lean out first. Uh, well, certainly easy strength will be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, that we, we do have that one workout, easy strength for fat loss, might be something you'd want to consider. Uh, you'll do, you know, the basic three sets of three and the deadlift or something like that. But at the end of it, you always go for a walk. So you, you do the basics of easy strength. And then right at the end, while your heart is kind of higher, you go out the door, you go for a walk, a ruck. Uh, my neighbor goes for a row. Uh, I know some people have told me to do exercise bikes. I'm not a fan of, of the treadmill, simply because I think you could you can just go out the door and, and you know, be around the, the nature and the universe. Uh, you certainly could do it. Uh, two, two months of easy strength for fat loss might be good. Or um, you could dive right in. Now, at six foot six, you know, the load you'll be using would be the, the 225 bar. Uh, what I would recommend before you start is have a few, maybe test yourself to make sure that 225 squat is reasonable with your limb length and reasonable because once you start doing those hard workouts, that's gonna be that's the load that's gonna be on your back. Oh, for what is it about 10 or 11 of the workouts? So, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. But rem reminder easy strength for fat loss, uh, just to kind of get the engine going for uh, the mass made simple. Thank you. That's actually kind of an interesting question, and I'd like to hear how you're doing this. We have a question from Alex. I have pretty bad elbow mobility issue. I am missing 10 degrees of extension, probably from arm wrestling. Uh, I've done in my younger years. I tried a couple of things without much success. You probably have a few tricks up your sleeve that could help me. Um, always remember, uh, Alex, I don't give medical advice. Boy, this sounds like a medical issue. Uh, I, might, I do have a few ideas for you, but don't construe these as better than surgery. My daughter's having an issue related to shoulder exercise. Well, let's get, okay, let's get through the first one. I'm probably gonna tell you both the same thing. So let's go. My daughter's having an issue related to shoulder exercises. Anything from overhead presses, lateral raises, and even farmer walks. She gets trapped neck and even headaches after those. My guess is that she keeps traps too tight. Are there any drills we could do to alleviate those? And then the final question is, last question is related above. I can't think of push exercises for her except for kettlebell floor presses, no bench, and push-ups. These seem to be fine. 
Can you please suggest something else short of strict press? Well, I would like to know the age of your daughter, but let's, there's two things I want you to think about both of you. And it goes right back to the, the island in Hawaii called Kauai, the Kauai study. Um, I know that simply hanging for a bar, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute longer, does wonders for the shoulders. Uh, one of my thoughts for both of you is simply hanging. Uh, I don't want to say it's going to correct that elbow, but it'd be interesting to see if it gives you any relief at all. And then, of course, following that up for your daughter's shoulder issues, uh, we have found r remarkable uh, improvement in shoulder issues with the hang. And, of course, this comes right out of that Kauai study. Um, you ask about some things for your daughter. It would be, I wouldn't mind you getting that looked into somehow. Uh, in fact, I'd like to see both of you go see a qualified personal trainer. I'd love to see some, ex uh, not me, but I'd, I'd like it if you got some x-rays looking at these situations. It could be something very simple, or it could be something that needs a surgical intervention. But without those details, I always worry. Um, if someone's traps are, are binding up, uh, I'm, I'm working one of our one of our regulars is a doctor of physical therapy and uh, he's actually found some clients who their their traps are almost non-existent so I think uh, I, I think I'd like you to take care of the medical pathway first um, as for issues with your daughter pressing most females I know have uh, issues with pushes of all kinds uh, it's going to take a lot longer for her to establish uh, appropriate pressing numbers. And even so, the numbers will never work out very well. Um, I always talk about that one young lady I used to work with. She could press 135 pounds for 10 reps, and her max was 140. And at first I thought that was strange until I started talking with other coaches, and we all came to the same insight that females and, and pushing overhead, uh, vertical and horizontal, seems to have issues. Uh, there's nothing new about this. The, the studies from Germany from the 1940s and 50s talked about this a long time ago. Um, women can be very, very strong in the hips and thighs and like concentric circles outward, they get sort of, I hate to say weaker and weaker, but compared to men, uh, less and less strong. Uh, as for options with the press, uh, there might be a value in looking at her learning like a, a movement like the push press uh, or the push jerk or even the, 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 the jerk to see if that kind of thing might uh, help there. But you're going to have to have a good set of eyes on those lifts to ensure that she doesn't uh, do any further damage to those traps. Uh, let's take care of those and then get back to me, okay? Thank you. Got a question for Johnny. You recommend for my 72-year-old weightlifting rookie mother to start out on machines, which I consider a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea, but there's always a but there, isn't there? Problem is that my whole family doesn't set foot in commercial gyms. We tend to be loners, so there you go. <laughs> great advice, still doesn't work. What progression would you recommend for someone who wants to start weight training at home? I thought about patterning with body weight, then progressing the kettlebells and TRX all in lowish reps, but high frequency. These are recommendations I gave to my mother as well to my sister with the Paleo Workout for Dummies book. Thanks, by the way, it's brilliant. Well, I mean, I mean, people get on me for doing this, Johnny, but danjohnuniversity.com has that all built in for you. Uh, just, I mean, the way Brian set up the uh, algorithm, you can go in there and type in, you know, no exercise or no equipment, and, and you can get a very substantial, simple program. Uh, yeah, the TRX is a marvelous introductory device. Uh, I think the, the TRX, the hanging squat, where you, you kind of hold that water ski position, go up and down, oh man, that, that'd be great for anybody. Uh, your 72-year-old rookie mother, she would figure this out day one and, and probably have great benefits. One other thing I even think you'd want to do, boy, I tell you, with just the TRX and uh, Tim Anderson's original strength, you might be able to put an entire little workout in, which might be enough for her for a long, long time. Uh, combining the basic TRX strengthening movements, which are basically body weight assisted movements with original strength might be golden. 
So that's my number one recommendation to you. Original strength and those body weight assisted TRX moves. Uh, we already did it for you at the, uh, at the, at the website, but you know, you, you can do what you need to do. Number two, what does, what role does biorhythm play in training? Um, oh, okay. I thought you meant, meant the original biorhythms. And of course that we discovered, uh, those became a big deal back in, uh, Oh, about 1975, 1976, and of course, uh, basically we discovered they were rubbish. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, I don't believe in, uh, I don't believe in horoscopes either. You know, uh, of course, I'm a Virgo, and we tend to be skeptical. It was a joke. According to mine, I would probably train late mornings. According to my kids' rhythm, I often start my workouts at 9:30. If I'm not just on 20-minute workouts, I, that'll fit in my day. I, I, I here's the thing, and, and and don't and don't take this wrong, Johnny, but uh, we humans wouldn't have survived uh, if we followed these ideas of biorhythms. Um, if um, if it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning and a saber-toothed tired tired comes sniffing around the den, uh, I can't say to my family. Sorry, folks, I'm at 11 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> you guys are going to have to deal with this. No. Um, I think, I know that some people are night owls. I know that. I know that's true. And I know see, that whatever they call morning glories, uh, you know, uh, early birds. I know that's true. But I also know that you can change that. Uh, many of my friends, uh, when they, they join the military, there's this kindly person called the drill sergeant that uh, enables you to learn how to wake up early in the morning by literally throwing you out of your own bed. Uh, so, and then right after you're done with boot camp, you seem to be an early riser for the rest of your life. Uh, let's, let's not put too much stock in that. Let's have you train when it's most appropriate for you to train. And if you lose a little bit in the beginning, don't worry. In a few weeks, you'll adapt and you'll be fine. Next question. I'm about to start Mass Made Simple. Don't stop reading here. <laughs> okay. And we'll do so without protein shakes and creatine, since over time I have found that both is not for me. Well, that's part of what the whole thing is about. Find out what works for you, and if you already know, skip that week. Do you have any advice on other nutritional tweaks? That, and do you think I'm missing out on something that's like gains if I eat enough? No. In fact, I'm not sure those nutritional tweaks uh, have any magical qualities in them. What I did the way I put that six weeks up with those little tests is you might find one that works really well for you. Now, I gotta say this, Johnny, you know, a nutritional tweak that works in 2010 might not work in 2011. The body adapts, the body adapts, the body adapts. And what I've noticed in my life that, you know, there was a time where protein shakes really had a value for me. And then one day it was like they didn't. Oddly, they had no value for me in the 70s either. It's when I started getting stressed with, and this is an interesting insight, when I had the two full-time jobs, the two daughters at home, my wife on the road all the time, I was cooking every meal for the kids. That's when uh, protein shakes started working well for me again. And as I'm just, you know, spitballing out loud here, I'm starting to think that uh, it's the reason is because I was struggling uh, keeping up with m multitasking. So yeah, just, just skip those. In fact, uh, I'm guessing from your age and your mother's age that you might be at a certain age range that the nutritional tweaks might not be something you want to do either. Uh, real quick, why? You know, gaining mass as we age uh, might not always be the best idea for our long-term health and, of course, our longevity. It's fine. There's value in lean body mass, of course but that extra mass that comes along with it sometimes isn't valuable. And finally, number four, which brings me to my last question. Since you are an open-minded person, really? Huh. I'm gonna tell my family and friends that. And the dad I never had, I wonder if you have any thoughts on how you can eat a pro high protein diet while still living in an environmental co uh, conscious way. I live in the countryside. I have access to all kinds of grass-fed animals, but still eating meat and fish in huge quantities doesn't feel right, neither for my body nor my environment. Even our most famous export, Arnold, tells us to cut back on meat, and I fear he is right. Uh, yeah, it's eat lower in the food chain. 
eat low in the food chain. Uh, instead of eating, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, mackerel and tuna, eat uh, herring, uh, eat sardines, we call them here. Uh, eat the small fish, eat, eat the little fish, uh, eat lower in the food chain. Um, there is, there are companies in the United States now that are working on uh, insect protein. Uh, that's pretty low in the food chain. That might not be something you want to do. Um, eggs. Uh, I don't want to get nasty emails from certain people, but you know the chicken lays an egg every day, and eggs are they're that's what they do. They lay eggs. Eggs laying chickens lay eggs. That's that's what they're bred to do. So eggs uh, lower on the food chain uh, probably is a good idea. You could also do what is nothing unusual, but of course eating a lot more legumes. Uh, and that's your bean family. Uh, beans are amazing food. Uh, just an amazing food, I think. Uh, they have its you know, a lot of people knock on them, but uh, legumes combined with almost any other vegetable gives you a perfect protein. So uh, there you go. Uh, sardines, herring, minnows, well, not minnows, uh, eggs, and insect protein. And, well, that's going to be a dinner for your kids. Uh, might help a lot. But I think you're right, and I'm trying to do the same thing. Uh, I have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really expanding my eating in the plant-based world. And it's not for social reasons, and I'm not saying it's better or worse for, your, uh, worse for your health and fitness. I have just been slightly moving in that direction because, you know, I do. I do think about my environmental impact, too. Uh, it's nice to uh, hear something from Austria, uh, and uh, it's a lovely place. Thank you for your questions. We have a question from Paul. What are your thoughts on an easy strength program consisting of pull-ups, handstand push-ups, pistols, or goblet squats, hyperextensions, and some ab wheel rollouts? You know, it's interesting. If you read the book, you'll find that that actually is what many people did to prepare themselves for what was called the Beast Challenge, which you uh, press the 48-kilo kettlebell with one hand, you do a pull-up with it, you do a pistol with it. When I recommend it to people, their program was just those three exercises. And as Karen Smith once said toward me, I can't believe how bored I got doing it, but how well I did on uh, when she did the tamer. Yeah, so yeah, it's it, it's fine to do that. Uh, you will notice with the handstand uh, uh, push-ups and the pull-ups is you're going to notice a level of hypertrophy on those, and it, it'll be kind of interesting. I'm a 38-year-old male, five foot seven, uh, 190, former collegiate wrestler, still in okay shape. I'm an iron worker. Yeah, my parents uh, were in the iron and steel business. My mother iron and my father stole. So I lift weights and do loaded carries all day long. I used to be a professional construction and salvage diver. That's kind of cool. The body has had very high mileage, arthritic elbows, and a tricky back. The last thing I feel like doing at the end of the day is taking my kettlebells or weights for a ride but I still really enjoy training, want to improve strength, and lose a few pounds of adipose tissue. <laughs> Thanks for saying adipose tissue. Uh, my only knock on your program, then looking back up, is the pull-ups. So, Paul, you, you are never allowed to fail on a pull-up. Of course, easy strength, you never fail, but even more so in your case, never fail. Handstand push-up uh, push-ups, you can't fail. So, on that upper body work, no fail, no fail, don't even get close. It's going to be practice, 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 practice. And remarkably over time, you're going to see amazing gains if you never fail on the pull-up and uh, handstand press-up push-up. Uh, I'm interested in seeing how you put this together. Remember, never fail. Never go close to failure. Finish the workout feeling a little bit better than when you started. Uh, and good luck to you, Paul. I would like some feedback on this because... Uh, the, the body weight, uh, easy strength people, whenever I actually do get feedback, very often it's much more positive than the people who do the barbell. And I think it's because with body weight training, uh, the feedback, the load, the feedback is you. And it's a lot more uh, obvious when you're going to miss a handstand push-up than someone missing a press. Good luck. Thank you.
We have a question from Mike. My question is for my 13 year old son, Jake. We are currently locked down in the UK, which means not only the gyms are closed, but all non-elite sport, including children's sports are not allowed. Jake plays rugby and is wanting to keep in shape over the next month or so when he won't be able to work out with his club. During the last lockdown, we mainly cycled because he enjoys it and did some running with bodyweight exercises such as press-ups and sit-ups. Uh, for American listeners, a press-up is a push-up. Okay. He wants to train again, and I'm not sure what else to do rather than what we did last time. I don't have any equipment other than three power bags, 5 kilo, 10 kilo, and 15 kilo, and a couple of light resistant bands. Can you give me any advice or suggestions? Well, I would be carrying those power bags every day. Uh, carry them over the shoulder, carry them overhead, bear hug, carry them, carry two at a time in the hands, carry, 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 carry. Maybe if you can, I know how well made these are, but you can clean and press them, you can clean and throw them, you can clean and press them, bring them behind the neck and throw them. Uh, you can just have a lot of fun with those. I would use those power bags as much as you can. Um, you know, if he has the 10 and 15 over one shoulder, they'll be sliding all over the place and the 15 on the other, that would be a very good thing. And to me, it'd be more rugby-like than a lot of the other nonsense you see. Um, if you're gonna do things for your conditioning, like cycling or, or running, make sure you mix in, it depends on where you are in England, if you can mix in some hills. If you can mix in some hills, I really think that's a good idea. Uh, big fan of hill sprints, uh, under underappreciated exercise. So think about that, okay? Uh, we have a final question here. Also, he's getting very interested. In, finally, also he's getting very interested in his diet, and as we all do, wants to gain some mass without putting any fat on. Uh, yeah, the holy grail of training. I want to get lean body mass, but no fat. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how many calories an active 13 year old needs, and the internet seems to be quite significantly on the point. I think he's a bit young for trying to reduce calories but I don't really know enough about diets for someone that age. Can you give us some pointers? Yeah, what you wanna do with him right now is teach him the discipline of a few things. One, water is his major source of, of well, hydration, water, okay. Uh, number two, uh, let's get some vegetables in every meal. Uh, I want you to start getting him thinking about that vegetables are, vegetables what, what athletes eat. Now, listen, a lot of elite athletes don't eat vegetables, but that's because God <laughs> shot that lightning bolt into them and made them just better than the rest of us. And that's good for them and good for them. And then there's the rest of us. But the nice thing about uh, vegetables uh, building up uh, his gut biome and it's, it's, it's got the fiber, it's got all the magical minerals and vitamins, uh, it, it also will get him into the discipline of being an elite athlete. Uh, when he sits down with you both, uh, with your family, and starts chopping vegetables, uh, chopping vegetables is going to make him a better rugby player because while he's chopping vegetables, he's conscious, he's, he's out there, he's daydreaming about why he's eating the vegetables to make him a better athlete. Uh, obviously, at every meal, I'd love to have, have him have protein and veggies at every meal, water at every meal. That would be best. Um, if you're looking for... Uh, ways for him to add extra protein. Uh, this, this, I'm out of my world here, but one of the things that I've had a lot of people tell me is that uh, pre-eaten foods said to be pretty good. And that would be like cottage cheese, uh, yogurt, uh, not that, not that sugary yogurt you get here in the States, but actual yogurt with that, that has that tang, uh, cheeses and things like that. Uh, our little friends who've already pre-digested a lot of it have done some of the heavy lifting for us. Uh, any any foods that you can find um, that have uh, a lot of density in their nutrition is something you want to look for. Now, every adult listening, I would tell you what you want is you want you want to eat meals that are this big with a thousand calories. But the young man, thirteen year old here, we want to make sure he has a few meals. And that's the, th that's the thousand calories, okay? I know that sounds funny, but it's actually kind of true. Um, hey man, and at 13, he's gonna have a real hard time, unless unless he's eating crap, unless he's, you've got, if he's eating candy and drinking soft drinks and not crap, uh, that's one thing. But if he's eating vegetables and he's eating the things we're talking about, I, I wouldn't worry too much about being lean. 
my friend Robin has a picture of me about his age and uh, I am just ripped to shreds and and the biggest mistake I made in my career was listening to those that just said I should have more weight on the scale versus uh, lean body mass. His pursuit should always be lean body mass and not how much he weighs on the scale. Lean body mass, lean body mass, lean body mass. Hey, and thanks for being involved in your son's life, Mike. And uh, good luck to you, okay? Well, there you go. There was another fun and exciting edition of the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. Now listen, uh, if you have questions, remember, email them to podcast at DanJohnUniversity.com. Thank you. I do my best to answer each and every one. I hope I get a chance to answer one of yours soon.